So, it's 2021, and we're overdue for another episode of Test Gear Teardown. So, here we have it, uh, our, our first fluke on Test Equipment Teardown. This is a fluke multimeter. We've already seen AVO multimeters, and we've seen a number of Hewlett-Packard Test Gear. Um, this is the first fluke. I've also got some uh, Tektronics gear, but they're mostly oscilloscopes, quite big and a bit more difficult to film, so I need to have a bit more space to get those uh, in front of the camera. Um, so here we got the first um, fluke instrument. It's the very fine 8050A digital multimeter. The 8050 is a four and a half digit digital multimeter. Um, there's also an 8010, the 8010A, which is a three and a half digit, and there's an 8012, I believe, as well. Um, the 8050, a little bit more resolution, that extra digit. Um, nice bit of kit. Unfortunately, they very often have a faulty, you find them second hand, they very, have a faulty LCD. The LCD uh, basically, for chemical reasons, turns black, uh, which is no good. So this is, in fact, a meter that I've repaired by taking the display out of one which was functioning and had faulty electronics and this one has got good electronics and a, had a faulty display. Um, combine the two and we have a working instrument. Uh, it's got all the usual features. It's got a button here for selecting volt mode, uh, milliamps for current mode, K ohms for resistance mode. It's not auto ranging. You have to select a range. This is the 200 ohm range. The 2 ohm range also for diode testing. Over here we've got the 20, 200 ohm, 2000 ohm and 20 mega ohm range. And similarly if you have it in milliamps you've got 200 microamps to 2 amps. If you have it in volts you've got 200 millivolts to 1000 volts on the DC ranges. Um, AC-DC switches over here that latches in and out and down here a button for relative mode so you can take a reading push relative mode and it becomes zero and then when you take the next reading it's relative to that previous setting power on off button it's not plugged into the mains at the moment um, input terminals milliamps for, for current is on a separate um, socket the common connection for ground and then this one is for measurements of voltage resistance and conductance it has a mode for conductance, which is this capital S for Siemens. Um, not seconds, it's not milliseconds, it's capital S. Um, if you push both those buttons, you get millisiemens, which is a unit of conductance. It's one over ohms. Um, there's a fuse holder behind the milliamp terminal or socket. So there's a little screwdriver slot there. You can unscrew that or un unbayonet that. And there's a two amp fuse behind there. That's what will blow if you put more than two amps through the, the current ranges. So enough of the front panel. How does it come to pieces? Well, I think this is a rather good bit of industrial design, actually. The uh, case is just a plastic moulding. And at the back it has, there it is, um, a single screw. So if we undo that single screw, you can see already it's letting go in there. Let the screw out. So with that one screw undone, the internals of the device now come out. It just slides out. There's no wires, there's no uh, trailing connections going back to the, the outer casing. It's just, there it is, there's the board. Now I'll just zoom that out a little bit, I think, because I think we need to see a bit more of that. Um, Let's see what we can see if we zoom out a bit. There we go. So that is the main printed circuit board of the meter. And then there's a second printed circuit board here, which handles the display. Display connection is up in this corner. It's upside down now, looking at it from the bottom. These are the input terminals. Uh, we've got some holes in the board there to reach through with an adjuster for calibration. Over this side, we've got the mains transformer. So that's mains in here, transformer to supply power, and 
two great big empty spaces, one here and one here. Those are for the optional battery pack. If you had the battery option, which I don't, um, there'd be a big NICAD battery here, a couple of cells here, a couple of cells here. Um, I'd recommend if you are looking by these things, don't get the battery version because although the battery option is useful, the batteries, if they've been left in there since the thing was made, have most likely corroded and filled the entire thing with corrosive vapours and, yeah, could have damaged the circuitry. I've got a, a, a Fluke 8600, which has had that problem, uh, which I still haven't finished repairing. Um, so if you can, if, if, you, if, if you don't need the battery option, uh, best to avoid. Um, what else can we see in here? Now, here is an internal fuse. So this is actually a much bigger fuse physically and electrically. It's, I think it's a 10 amp rated fuse. Um, I can't see the rating on there. Um, that is the fantastic safety feature of nearly all flukes. Um, it's a much bigger physically thing. And the reason for that is this is capable of blowing in extreme fault conditions. The fuse in the little socket on the front, the 2 amp one, there is a slim chance, of, but it's a, it, it is a risk, that that fuse could, rather than blow, it could simply arc. In certain extreme cases, with lots of energy behind the, um, the circuit, um, you get a, a kind of arc over. And you can see the wire here. This is, this is the, 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 the amp terminal wire coming in. So this is a second fuse. This fuse is specially designed to be sure to blow, even in really extreme conditions. Um, unfortunately, they cost about £10 to replace. So the, the few pence for the replacing the, the 2 amp fuse, well, OK, you blow it, you put another one in. If you blow this one, then you've done something really seriously wrong, but it's maybe saved your life. Uh, it, it's that kind of serious um, fault condition. Um, as I say, they're about ten pounds a shot uh, if you if you do blow one, or if it's missing, if you get one of these things and it's it's been it's been pinched. Um, little blue ceramic circuit board here. This is um, let's just get that a little bit zoomed in again. Uh, this this little circuit board is the RMS converter. So this converts in analog. Um, converts the RMS value of the input AC signal into DC and it does so using true um, true RMS rather than uh, averaging which a lot of meters would do and round here what do we have well not too big a surprise we've got a uh, a chip 40 pin dill chip we've got some power supply circuitry there's a crystal here for the digital uh, side of things the clock uh, we can see Another white rectangular object in there, that is a precision resistor pack. Again, a ceramic uh, substrate and a very precise and stable resistance for selecting the attenuation for the um, range selection. We turn this around a bit more. We've got this. Looks a little bit Sinclair, this thing. Uh, sort of... Um, Flexible PCB. I'm a little bit worried about things that look like they're made by Sinclair, but this seems to be all right. It it it, it seems to work okay. This is the connection to the display. This is this is the measuring board. This is the display board. So this connects the two. Seems to work okay. I've not had a problem with that. On the display board itself, there's some some chips on there, and then at the very front, there's the connection to the LCD itself. And that's about all we can really see at the moment. We've got um, beautiful construction, as you'd expect from a, a fluke bit of kit. Um, nicely put together. On the bottom, we can see there's a, uh, a guard track all the way around the, the mains inlet. There's a plastic shield over that as well, so um, it protects a little bit from having the live mains on it. Um, and there's a big metal plate. It's only thin metal. 
Um, this is a screen. It's grounded in the middle. There's the earth in the middle there. Um, remember, the outer casing is just plastic, a plastic sleeve. So the whole thing needs some screening, and that's what does the screening. This is the sensitive analog input circuitry, screened and protected from stray uh, from stray fields influencing your measurements. Um, can I see a date code on this just to um, find out what date this thing was made? Um, now down there, that 40 pin chip, if we can get it to focus on that, um, made by Mostec and that has a date code of 8013 on it. So this is made in 1980. Um, week 13 of 1980, at least the chip was. Maybe the chip was in in stock on the shelf at Fluke for some time. This may have been made in 80 or 81. Um, so that's 40 years old now. And, of course, it's, apart from the display, it works just as well as it ever did. Um, performs its design function absolutely fine. Um, if it had 40-year-old batteries in, I wouldn't have thought that was quite so likely. Um, another thing about the battery option, there's some empty component um, positions here. Um, I suspect those are part of the battery charging circuit. They were NICAD, so they, they would have had a battery charging circuit and it would have charged from the, the mains inlet. Um, so there we have it, I think. That's probably about all we can really see. It's upside down. Uh, like that, the board actually is that way up, and it's in the case. Um, so that's now going to go back into my um, workbench as my main bench meter to replace the uh, model 8010A, the 8010A, uh, which I had previously, um, which was three and a half digit. This one being four and a half digit, a little bit nicer. It's also got the relative. Um, measurement mode which is something I doubt I'll ever use but at least it's it's there um, and the other thing that the, um, the 8010 looking at it now has got a 10 amp um, current range it's got an extra terminal on the front for a 10 amp current range which this hasn't um, maximum current for this thing is 2 amps uh, 8010 has got the same uh, internal safety fuse um, it'll be a 10 amp rated thing um, and it's constructed in a very similar way internally but it, as I say it has one fewer digits in the display which when you compare it to a modern multimeter modern very very cheap multimeter looks a little bit hmm, not so good uh, a lot of modern multimeters these these meters um, the, the, the flukes of this generation, um, they will, uh, because they're three and a half digit or four and a half digit, they'll display up to 1999 or 19999. So they'll count to nearly 2000 or nearly 20,000. A typical modern multimeter, the first digit isn't a one on these devices, it's, it, it, it's just not a one. The first digit on a modern pocket multimeter that you, you, you get from a uh, modern supplier might well have a first digit that can do um, maybe four or five. So it's maybe um, a three and three quarter or four and three quarter digit. And it would have things like a continuity beeper. This, this hasn't got a continuity beeper. It can measure diodes. It can measure the forward drop of a diode, but it can't beep for continuity. Again, slightly frustrating for a bench meter. You kind of want to be able to beep things through, and this one can't do it. You have to go and get your pocket meter. Anyway, there we have it. That's the uh, the very fine Fluke uh, 8050.